G'day and welcome to the Cameron Blowy Show, episode number five. How are you doing, Blowy? I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm down at the beach. It looks like um, I'm just feeling a few sprinkles coming down, so I might get a bit of rain. I don't have an umbrella with me, but that's okay. Same as me, man. I'm actually at the top of this amazing view. Um, I'm going to take my camera off and just give you a bit of a look. It's at, I'm at a, like a mountain bike park in the middle of the, close to the city um, in Melbourne. And um, let, just have a look at the view there. It's amazing. But look at the big puddles because there's been a lot of rain. And um, I don't really want to ride down the tracks because A, it's muddy, but B, um, it's still closed due to COVID. Um, they, in Australia here, they've locked down all the skate parks and parks and stuff, and um, Melbourne in particular. A few skate parks that are reopened in Queensland. Yeah, Melbourne's um, in particular is, um, I think it got hit the worst with the, the virus, so they've got um, the strictest um, rules. Okay. Yeah. Um, but now I'm just trying to find a bit where it's not muddy, but it's so I don't cake my um, wheels in thick mud. But um, yeah, it's, the but this, that's right. Now we've in Melbourne, we've been on lockdown now for about nine weeks, and I think the people are getting sick of it, um, and so they've kind of people have just got started going out again to the shops like normal. Yeah. Like they've had enough. And like they go, no, that's enough. So now, like you go down to the the shops, um, and there's like hundreds of people there, and it's like, are you serious? Are they socially distancing? Are they wearing masks? No, they like it's like nothing's happened. Yeah, they're like, no, I did my nine months, no, nine weeks. Sorry, it's um, game over. So, oh well. Yeah. Um, I'm just descending now. There's here. There's a little, um, little trick bit with these like um, wooden um, like ramps and stuff that you can ride over and do technical stuff on it. Um, yeah. But anyway, I'm gonna head up onto the footpath here because I don't want to go through the mud anymore. But anyway, so how about how's the restrictions in um, Japan? I mean, I've been I've been following everything closely online and. The big cities are a lot bigger, uh, a, little, a lot stricter. We've been quite lucky down here. There have only been a handful of cases in my prefecture, which is called Kagoshima. It's pretty much of uh, Japan's major four islands. It's like uh, the most southwest. And so we've been pretty well isolated against all that kind of stuff anyway. I mean, the, the, the place itself is socially isolated by nature. So, but I mean, it's definitely been different. Like, I've only lived here for a couple of months, so I don't really know what life is normally like. I'm actually going past the park, <laughs> yeah. the park at the moment, so you'll see a little uh, wow. monorail thing go above me quite soon. But I mean, it's pretty dead as well. So everywhere is dead, and people are definitely. But you don't. You, but you're not sure how dead it would be on a normal day. Is what you're getting at, because you haven't lived. <laughs> yeah. And well, maybe coming into summer. In Japan, they're very seasonal, aren't they? So, in winter, those places will be dead, but in summer, it'll be packed out. Yeah. Everyone will be wearing something. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, what do you want to talk about today, Kama? I thought we'd talk about springboard diving and tower diving. Hmm. That's interesting. That's a, a, an interesting, rare topic to talk about. Yeah. But um, you're doing a good job as well, you know, like, pretending this wasn't pre-organized as well. Yeah, because it was my life as well, and um, it's um, I know just as much as you do because we both lived this experience together. And that's the kind of the topics we're trying to tackle, I guess. Those ones where we are, um, we can both kind of contribute to them. Obviously, last week you talked about your um, experience in Bali, and that was mainly your story. So I think we can make uh, exceptions here and there if, if the story warrants it. Yes, yes. So anyway, um, like I tell people about springboard diving and stuff, and a lot of people don't really know much about it. But um, and we'll kind of go through some of those details a bit later. But how did like let's um, 
start with uh, how we actually fell in love with the idea or even found out about it ourselves. Yeah, I mean, it's something like I didn't really have much experience doing because it, you don't really have many diving pools in Australia. And um, I do remember seeing, do you remember Angie, uh, sorry, what's his name? Albie Mangle? Yes. So he did some, uh, it was at the theatre, I watched it at the cinema. And he did a, like, World Safari, I think it was called, maybe Al Albie Mangle's World Safari. And I think in there, he went to the top of his mast of his uh, boat and he dove from the top of the, uh, from the top of the uh, mast into the water. And I just thought that'd be so much fun. The, um, what's it called? The crow's nest? Yeah. And I just remember thinking that would be so much fun. Like, you literally couldn't hurt yourself because there's water. And um, <laughs> how, how wrong, how I wrong we were. That's right. But anyway. Um, how naive. The first uh, time I actually really remember it being a thing, we'd met this guy, my dad, there was a world exposition in Brisbane, Expo 88. And uh, like it changed Brisbane forever. It was a huge uh, moment for Brisbane as a world city. But, um, I, oi! You have a stand? My, um, no, my um, dodgy camera mount that I bought f on eBay yeah. just snapped. Oh no. Literally. The plastic, that's right, I'll carry, I'll hold it. Handheld. Okay. Old school. So anyway, uh, we, we were, it must have been 1988, and Dad was working at Expo as an acupuncturist. And we had a, uh, a picnic or something up in the Glasshouse Mountains, and I remember going there, and Dad said, hey, this, meet this guy. He, uh, he works in the Aquacade at Expo. And I was thinking, oh, I don't really know what that is. And we, we said hello, and he had a North American accent. And yeah, these re these like three quarter length uh, long shorts with a Canadian flag on the side. So he had a North American accent, and he said, "Hey, you guys want to see a backflip?" I said, "Well, yeah, yeah." And he just did a backflip on the spot, and I was like, "Wow, I've met my hero." He was just like the coolest guy. Anyway, and what he was probably probably in his um twenties at that I'd stage. Say, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, most of the, the people that mum and dad introduced us to couldn't do backflips on the uh, on the spot and they didn't speak in American accents either. No, I never saw a really do a backflip. No. Let's try not to use personal names in here if I... Oh, but he's a legend, so <laughs> okay. we can. Um, anyway, uh, it was a few weeks or months later and uh, one day we we're getting ready for school and Dad said, ah, no, don't worry about your uniforms today, kids. Just get your togs and we're going to jump in the car. And I'm thinking, I'm sure it's a school day today. But radio, Dad's the boss. So we jumped in the car. We went across the bridge. I said, "Oh, we're not staying in our local hometown of Redcliffe. We're actually going into town." Like, I still had no idea where we're going. As we got closer, we kept asking him questions. He wouldn't really tell us what was happening. But we went right into the middle of town, and he said, "Okay, you're going to Expo today." I said, "Oh, awesome!" Back then, we we lived um, probably about um, an hour to the city, and um, we didn't go into the city very often. We were kind of um, stuck on our peninsula that we, where we lived, especially while we were young and before we had our own transport or before we could catch trains by ourselves. But anyway, that's just a side note. Continue, David. So anyway, he said, look, I'm working today, but do you remember Sheldon? I said, yeah, Sheldon. I've been telling everyone about him doing his backflips on the street. He did a backflip. <laughs> He's got an American accent. He goes, well, you're gonna spend the day with, you're going to spend with the day with him in the aquacade. That's why you brought your togs. And I was like, what? He? <laughs> well, I think we knew at that stage. I'm not sure. Or maybe, yeah. I'm not sure if we'd actually gone in and seen it or not. But anyway, we knew what it was. And so we're quite excited. And, okay, the Aquacade. What was the Aquacade? Okay, the Aquacade was a pool. But it wasn't just a regular pool. There were two, like, uh, round pools that were each five meters deep. And they each had a 100 foot uh, diving tower. Um, they also had uh, springboards that were, I think, four meters high, uh, and then they had maybe a ten and maybe a twenty meter tower as well. Yeah, but saying a platform is a little bit misleading because it was more like a little a tiny, a tiny little little yeah. ledge on a like a Romeo yeah on Julia a stick kind of on like a paddle veranda. pop stick. Yeah. And so. Um, Sheldon said, look, there are four or five decks shows a day, so I have to do them all. 
but between shows we can hang out, you can swim in the pools. And we're like, oh, okay, that sounds all right. And um, we kind of decided, you know, let's, oh, we can sit in any seat because we're going to be, we're going to have the first choice of seats like every, every time. So we went and sat and watched the show and it kind of went for half an hour or so. And the moment was over, we left and let the crowd kind of move out of the stadium. And then we went down and he said, you ready for a swim boys? And we're like, oh yeah. And uh, yeah, it was great. Like um, I'd never jumped off anything higher than the side of the pool before that. But uh, they had these uh, bubbles that you could release from the bottom of the pool and it made the water softer. Like you'd never jump from too high on them because you'd go straight to the bottom with these bubbles on. But for... That's right, massive bubbles. Yeah. They pump air in so when you land, you're landing on the broken water. Yeah, and it was... So it's not hard and flat. And it was like... Hang on camera, before you go any further, yeah. I just want to show you something cool. Yeah. There's this massive golden statue here um, and there's a big... Uh, Buddhist temple. Um, is this the same place that you were when you told us um, you were you pretended you're in Asia the other day? No, no. This is another one. This is the one that I won the um, photography competition um, for this um, this statue. Okay. Yeah, and that's that. With the money that I won, I I actually bought this GoPro that we're recording this um, show with. Well, so go. full circle. Full circle. There you go. Without without that there that statue i wouldn't be we wouldn't be doing the show today so oh, there you go how's that i just disturbed a couple of kites as well sitting on the uh, the beach here there are these these birds that you see all over japan and uh once actually when i was in near kamakura been like a like a bin chicken no, would you it's would it, similar to that correct. as in the the amount that you see uh, over there no not really because it's more in coastal areas rather than urban areas yeah, but anyway, one of them once stole pizza from my hand when I was having uh, lunch on the beach near Kamakura. What type of pizza was it? Oh, uh, it was from First Kitchen, so it was just like one of those cheap ones. Uh, Vegetarian? No, I was eating all kinds of things back then. Oh, okay. And as it happens, actually, anyway. I've just also um, come to a uh, place of worship. This is a shrine. And you can't actually see it from here, but it's like a, it's an island at low tide, but, sorry, it's an island at high tide, but it's low tide now, so I can walk across. So, um, we're going to walk up there. Anyway, back to the story. So we, um, we're at the Aquacade, and we jumped in, and uh, had a great time. Like, it was just awesome. It was like a... Uh, we got to go under these special tunnels as well that went to the backstage area because they had all these dancers and swimmers, synchronized swimmers who would um, come through from from behind the uh, the scenes. They just suddenly appeared in the pool, but it was because they had these uh, tunnels. So we were swimming under them. Yeah. That was that was my favorite part was the tunnels. Yeah, because um, it was like a cave, like you're going cave diving. There's like these hidden tunnels that the audience can't see, and the people just appear for the synchronized swimming, and. Um, it was magical and then the water was so clean and you could dive in and then swim out hold your breath for a little bit and pop out and you're in this amazing um aquacade it's great i'm going to show you these really interesting little insects as well they're everywhere around here on the coast they almost look like half like a prawn i've got something quickly just to show you because um i'm here under a bridge and they've got they converted into a um a rock climbing wall and um, a free oh, one. Wow. It's really cool. Yeah, but because of COVID, they've um, taken off all of the um, the knobs I think you grab onto. Yeah. So um, it's just an empty wall with holes in it. So yeah. you wouldn't know what it is if um, you never saw it before. Yep. So okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm going to text on at the top of this uh, shrine now. So I'll walk back down the same stairs. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's pissing down, pissing down here now. Um, I've just stopped under the bridge to um, not freeze, but I'll go out in a second. Continue. Yeah, so Emma. anyway, um, Sheldon, he was, um, he basically took us up all these towers and told us to check out, you know, these pools and showed us every feature there. We didn't go any higher than four meters, but even at that age, I must have been what um, 11 or 10 or something, and 
jumping from uh, four meters was also quite a feat for me. But uh, I remember watching that pretty much every show that day, and he did the high dive once. I remember him telling me, so this is a, a 100 foot jump. That's like, um, yeah, what is it, 30 meters. And he used to get a thong, like a flip flop. He'd take the, uh, the strap for your feet off and he'd put it down his uh, speedos. And that would. Is it a, a double plugger or a single matter. plugger? Uh, the main thing didn't was matter. That he would be putting that over his, uh, his uh, genitals and over his uh, genitalia. His, yeah. his anus so the water didn't go you know, up and give him an enema. But anyway, up the Russell do you remember point. how much money he got paid per jump? Like they gave him an extra bonus for doing this jump. That's right, he got a little bit extra for doing the high dive, like, didn't he? Because it was... Uh, yeah, a little bit extra, it was five bucks it was extra. Danger money. Yeah, like <laughs> this is a, a, a uh, jump that would kill you and you got five bucks extra apparently. But back then we were probably like, five dollars! Wow, you could buy the um, a good show bag with that at the Ecker. <laughs> That's right. Um, so anyway, we went back and, um, you know, we were telling all our mates about this experience and it was, uh, something had, had changed, something had gotten into our veins and we were like so keen to uh, continue this. But there were only two pools in the whole of Brisbane and they were a long way from us. But I don't know if it was that year, no, it wouldn't have been that year because he would have been so busy with Expo that he wouldn't have been able to coach us. But the next year he stayed on and um, we started getting coached by him at uh, Centenary Pool, which is an outdoor pool in Spring Hill in uh, the inner suburbs of Brisbane. Do you remember that? Oh, um, yeah, of course. Like, I mean, the first it was few a... lessons, but I don't actually remember how it started. Um, I remember that, um, I, I don't remember exactly how it started. I just remember doing the lessons because I was, I was a little bit younger than you. And also, you seem to remember these things better than me. But, um, yeah, they were great. We used to go in on Saturday mornings. And uh, we used to just love doing that. Like, we learned... Before that, I couldn't do a somersault. Like, not, not even on a trampoline or anything. But we had to... Um, they had a trampoline at the diving pool that we used for training. So we'd uh, practice our technique there first. So we learned how to do back somersaults and front somersaults and how to dive into the water properly, how to do reverse dives, which were kind of difficult because you had to lean back and dive in. And just, just the basics, like we'd learn how to actually do the walk up onto the um, diving board. That's right. Um, and do the bouncing, because it's a really, that's, that's the- um, That's an art form in the, itself, isn't it? That's right, yeah, those basics, if you don't have those, then you're not gonna be able to do anything else. And we are stewards, so by nature, we're quite rigid. And uh, Yeah, we're not very flexible. No. And that definitely held me back. I'm, I know about that. Like my pikes, I just couldn't get my head down to my knees like they should be. Yeah. So we did that. I'd say... Oh, I remember doing it in um, year seven because I remember we had this... Um, do you remember that book where... It was in the last year of primary school and it was kind of like about goal setting and everything and uh, you, you kind of set goals and things like that. But to make yourself accountable, you kind of wrote them down and uh, you had to check back on them. But I, I remember in that book writing, I wanted to be able to do a, dumb, a double somersault. That was like one oh, of my wow. goals. Yeah. Yeah. And it would have been by the time I, my first year of high school we had the uh, Queensland state titles and uh, our diving club, uh, Dino's Dining Club. I don't know how, I don't remember doing any, um, like did they have any preliminary competitions that allowed us to get in them or was it because we belonged no, to the no, diving I think, club? No, I think Shel Sheldon probably pulled some strings um, Pulled some strings and yeah, yeah. Got, the, got the deal done. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. it wasn't really a big community, was it, the diving? Uh, no. No, and look, they're probably happy they got more new contestants in there. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, oh, I was quite proud of myself that day because I, uh, I took the bronze on the one meter uh, springboard in my division. Do you remember that? I won the. the I do remember, Cam. You got a, You're in the newspaper. Yeah. Do, and um, do you remember hold what? It, holding up your proud um, little um, trophy. 
and I didn't get shit. <laughs> and I was I was a little bit jealous, to tell you the truth. Do you know why um, I was in the uh, in the newspaper though? Uh, Sheldon probably pulled some strings again. No, 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 no. So I had my gold, my bronze medal. And I was so proud of myself because you know at high, um, primary school in all the sports carnivals, I only got a ribbon once, and that was like in my final year for in fourth place for the 800 meters. And so yeah. having a, gold, a bronze medal in the state championships was like, I was so proud of myself. And, and, uh, but the thing was, like, they, you knew about it, mum knew about it, but no one else really knew about it. And I was just, I remember thinking like, this is not good. Like, I need more people to find out about it. And, you know, we didn't have any internet or Twitter or anything there to boast upon. So I um, took the next lo logical step. I got my... Uh, I got my uh, certificate and I got my uh, medal and I walked down to the local newspaper and uh, I went in there and talked to the secretary and I kind of just said to her, oh, you could I uh, just thought I'd let hey, you... Hey Cameron, can I, s yeah. can I stop you here, sorry? I'm at this, um, we got, it's um, Hop Nation, um, it's a hipster brewery Yeah. and um, co because of the um, restrictions people uh, lining up out the front and getting their takeaway um, beers. Beers and like they do these. Oh, what, I can't remember what they're called. They're called um, like they put them in an old like um, old liquor bottle yeah. and moonshine. refill it like from the tap. Yeah, like a moonshine bottle, but it, it's got a proper name, which is I can't remember what it's called. It's a real hipster name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what they're doing in here. It's pretty cool. Um, continue. Are they are they are they open containers or are they closed? Oh, they have to close them. Yeah. But they're they're not um, like you watch them close it. Okay. But it's a recyclable bottle uh, that you take with you, yep. and you wash it out yourself, and then you bring it in. It's like a keep cup type of thing. I see. But yeah, but for it's beer. pretty cool. For beer, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, someone in the comments can probably um, write the name of what it's called for us. Yeah. Not a not a mason jar. No, no. It's like a, I know what it's called. It's called a a growler. A growler. <laughs> Yeah, we had a different term, we had different meaning for that back in Redcliffe. We certainly did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a growler. Uh, so anyway, back to my newspaper story, I went down and just started talking to the secretary about how, um, you know, I, I was kind of trying to be a little bit humble about it. And so she was just confused because I wasn't being clear. And I was like, oh, you know, like I... I, I'd been in this uh, competition, you know, I did, I mean, it's pretty, I mean, you know, bronze medal and everything, and she goes, yeah, sorry, what, what, do you, what, what do you, what do you want me to do? Do you want to talk to a journalist? I'm like, oh, yep, yep, yeah, yeah, that'd be great, that'd be great. So she went at the back and someone else came in, he said, oh, mate, I heard you did some, did pretty well in a diving competition or something. And I said, oh, you know, third, you know, I got third. And oh, who told you? Oh, who told you? Oh. Wow, the word's really getting round, isn't it? <laughs> and he goes, okay. So he went and got his notebook and took some, some of my uh, some details and everything. Um, I don't know if he took my quotes or just like uh, dot points because there were no quotes in the, uh, in the article. So I'm not sure if that was because... Um, they, they, you spoke they too much probably. Quotes, You're going. Like were... Yeah. Well, anyway. Um. You know what? The journalist, the journalist was probably pretending to write it down, but he wasn't actually writing anything. He's going, oh, yep, 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 got it, yep, got it all, mate, yep, yep. I do remember, though, like, he was like, oh, damn, you know, where do you train? And I said, oh, Centenary Pool. And he said, oh, we can't really get there for a photo, can we? Damn. Oh, I should, pity you didn't bring your, your medal with you. I said, oh, actually, it's in my pocket. <laughs> and he goes, oh. Oh, pity, pity you didn't bring your Speedos with you, too. Oh, mate, I'm wearing them. <laughs> so he, he organised a photographer to take a photo of me. But anyway, I remember um, the next week, you know, when the paper was going to come out and I woke up nice and early so I could read it. I went downstairs and Dad was sitting at the breakfast table reading the paper. And I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so I sat down and had my breakfast and he's thumbing through it. And then he gets to one page and he looks up at me and he shakes his head and he goes, you're a dickhead, Dave. You're a dickhead, Dave. Because he would have known exactly how it happened. And I'd, I hadn't mentioned it to anyone in the family as well. Cause, uh, I actually don't know why I, even, why I didn't mention it. That's, um, that's how our dad shows affection. Yeah. He um, calls us a dickhead. But he loves us. Uh, he does. And he's yeah. a loyal, um, loyal viewer. He is. So, uh, shout out to, to Brenny. Yeah. Um, and one thing that I remember clearly is talking about Speedos was 
our speedos that we used to wear. What colour were they, Cameron? Red. Yes, we had matching speedos. Yeah. Red ones. They made us go faster. Red ones. Yep, could flip around quicker. Share that story, Joe, about the uh, the, the faster red bicycle. Oh, in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, as we as it's well known, red goes faster than other colours when you're buying a car or something like that. Um, and when we were riding around uh, Mount Fuji on our our um, project, which you can check out in the link here, um, we we were getting the, the higher bikes, and I said to the guy, he goes, oh, which one do you want? I said, oh, this one, because it's red, it's faster. He goes, no, it's not. <laughs> it's the same. They're exactly the same, because they're the same bike. I go, yeah, yeah, but this one's red. It goes faster. He goes, no, it's exactly the same bike. I just told you that. I'm like, yeah, but the color. And he just yeah. didn't want a piece of it. He didn't even, no. it must be a cultural thing. And a few people. Or maybe he wasn't <laughs> a joker. Yeah. A few people who have watched that have commented on that. They like that little gag. Yeah. But the I thought he might be a bit of a joker because when we went to his, um, he had a restaurant that was there and he had like this picture of his face and like it kind of looked cute and like he was kind of like a character. So I thought, oh, this guy's going to be a bit of a character. He's going to have a few LOLs. But um, the LOLs weren't there. Um, he was all business. He had to show us the do the walk around of the push bike and show us how to use the brakes and, <laughs> and uh, a few people mentioned that people thought that was funny but that's exactly what we asked him to do so <laughs> it was it was perfect yeah um but anyway diving back to diving so after that we kind of i don't know if i think sheldon maybe went back to north america or something and so we couldn't i mean we could have trained with somebody else but we didn't did we we didn't because we were loyal. No, I wasn't anything about loyalty. It was, I think, I don't know, Dad probably scammed some uh, free lessons for us off Sheldon, so, because he owed him a few favours. Yeah, well, I remember Sheldon as well. Um, he, after that, he gave us um, his trampoline that he That's had at right. the swimming pool because he was no longer allowed to keep yeah. it there. And um, we were like, all right. We got, had, so this is what really made us a lot better at our, um, our stunts and stuff was we had this olympic size trampoline in our backyard oh, yeah. which we could use whenever we wanted and also it had attached to it this um these two massive poles which you put a which had ropes on it yeah but we didn't and um you'd put it a thick to the trampoline at home well we did for a while sheldon used to put it up for us oh did he yeah well, yeah it but it wasn't there the whole time no no it was only for a while yeah. and until he got his own trampoline and then he um, put it there. But um, yeah, the trampoline in our backyard was um, the best thing growing up as kids. Everyone would, all our mates would come over and um, we would um, just spend all day on the trampoline. Um, and our next door neighbor, it was right at the front of our neighbor's house. And um, one day he got angry because we were jumping on it and we could see inside his kitchen. Like we were young, young kids, like we didn't care about whatever he was doing in his kitchen. And, Usually a kitchen's not such a private place that you really care if a little kid is glances in the kitchen and sees your apple and a pineapple and a plate. It's, you know, it's not that private. But anyway, at night time, he snuck into a house and cut it with a knife, um, allegedly. But um, yeah, Brenny wasn't happy, so he went and um, the other guy another asshole or something like yeah, that i remember waking up and mum or dad saying to me oh we've got some really bad news and i thought somebody had died and they said you want to sit down dave i said oh no who's dead so blowy is it blowy <laughs> so it was actually a bit of <laughs> now blowy sitting next to you it was actually a bit of a relief when i found out that um it was only the that blowy wasn't dead was cut. but i remember running up the back and seeing this big slice in the middle and i was like well, what how and they said, we don't know but we just saw it and Dad said, oh, I reckon I was an excellent neighbour. And apparently Dad confronted him and he didn't deny it. Yeah. Well, because he mentioned us, the kids jumping on the, right at the yeah. front of his, um, that's where he went to. That's so right. it was obvious. So I think we replaced it, but luckily we, um, we got that replaced, but it took a little oh, while, yeah. but. Because um, we didn't have much money in I those days. But I always preferred. They were expensive mats. They were very, he had to get them custom made because 
you can't just buy them at like the no. local um, Kmart or whatever. You have to get go to a special trampoline shop. That's right. Um, and we had a dog named Bouncer, which we talked about in the last episode, um, or a couple of episodes ago. And um, she used to jump up on the trampoline and leave a nice poo there every morning. <laughs> so we'd play this game where you two of you would jump on the trampoline at the same time and try and bounce the poo into each other <laughs> and, until it went flying off the trampoline. Like you double bounce oh, the poo. That was I good fun. I hadn't thought about that Dangerous. until you mentioned it. It like had I hadn't thought about that dire years. consequences. But yeah, remember that? Every morning there was a fresh one. And if you got there too early, the bouncing technique wouldn't work because it would just slice through the... It would be like a cheese... No, like a... What, like a, a cheese grater or something? They would just kind of sift, like just go through. And there's like... Yeah, but um, it was pretty funny. But anyway, roll up. Because of the um, trampolining and the diving, that prov provided the foundation for um, so many other things, like uh, like our rollerblading. Because of that, I had the confidence to uh, do front somersaults on my rollerblading, on my rollerblade, sorry. And uh, I'll get again, that goes back to the first episode, how I got my nickname. So this was really instrumental part of our life. Oh, massive! This was massive part of our life, and. The fact um, that we could do somersaults, like, it's what made us lots of friends. Like, we'd go down the beach and do somersaults onto yeah, the yeah. sand. At school, we'd be doing somersaults. We, um, like, I was in um, the school, um, Rocker Stedford, with um, my friends, and we would just do somersaults, and it was just, um, yeah, a massive part of our life. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And, and you're, passing, you're passing that on to another generation? Yeah. I've got my son at the moment, he's learning, um, he's going to a special kindy where they learn how to walk on their hands and, uh, you know, do flips and jump and tumble and all this kind of stuff. So uh, this school's quite known, uh, well known in Japan for basically uh, raising all this uh, elite athletes. Yeah, cool. Um, so hopefully um, in... Um 35 years time um, your son is doing a podcast or something and similar a, a virtual reality um, uh, 3d um, oh, mind um, implant podcast or whatever technology is available there talk yeah talking about how going to this um, preschool gave him um, his um, life um, motivation yeah. Well, we've kind of reached the half hour mark now, so um, I reckon we say goodbye here. All right. Well, um, thank you for listening, and um, hope to see you in the next episode. Right, yeah, over and out. Bang. See you later.